A floodgate is an unofficial term for cards with continuous effects that restrict one or both players from performing some actions. With that in mind, we'll be going over the worst cards of the game, which technically fall under this definition. And at number 10, we have Aurora Paragon. This is a level 4 monster which prevents both players from special summoning monsters while it's on the field, and doesn't have a restriction on the card being special summoned itself, like Vanity's Fiend. However, Aurora Paragon also has an additional effect where when another monster is normal summoned to either player's side of the field, its effect activates which destroys itself. Now, Aurora Paragon has never seen competitive play, which is saying something because every single other generic level 4 lore monster, which prevents special summons, has seen competitive play. Even all the level 5 and higher monsters that prevent special summons have seen competitive play. Aurora Paragon is the only one with this really good effect which has never been played, and that's because its downside is just too easy to get this card off the field. However, there is a way around it. There's a continuous trap card called By Order of the Emperor, which has the effect that if a monster activates an effect which triggers when a monster is normal summoned, you can choose to negate the activation of that effect and then draw one card. And what do you know, Aurora Paragon's effect involves the normal summon of a monster. So, you could just negate its effect with By Order of the Emperor, and then draw a card every time it would try to destroy itself to instead keep that wonderful floodgate effect and then draw a card every time a monster is normal summoned. And you would think with this wonderful two card combo in the game which lets you draw a card and lock out special summons that Aurora Paragon would see play. But it's more of a gimmick than it is a meta defining combo. Because if you really want to just stop your opponent from special summons, there's no reason to play this combo over just fossil died Apachycephalo or one of the barrier statues. And at number 9 we have Talisman of Trap Sealing. This is a continuous spell card which can potentially negate the effects of all trap cards, and prevents trap cards from being activated while it's on the field. Basically a similar effect to Jinzo, an excellent floodgate card that has seen competitive play ever since it came out. However, in order to activate this card, you need to control a face-up level 3 vanilla monster called the Sealmaster Mace. And Sealmaster Mace only has 1100 attack, but at least is a dark spellcaster type monster, so enjoys a whole bunch of generic support. However, if Sealmaster Mace is removed from the field, then Talisman of Trap Sealing is destroyed. So in order to gain the wonderful effects of locking out all trap cards, you have to keep a level 3 vanilla monster on your side of the field alive, which is pretty difficult when you can't use trap cards ironically enough. They do also have another card called Talisman of Spell Sealing, which has the same conditions as Talisman of Trap Sealing, except it negates the effects of all spell cards instead of traps. And being able to lock out all spell cards on a continuous trap card that you can chain to a spell card during your opponent's turn is a little bit better, but still bad because of the same restrictions. So really, we could have both of the two ceiling cards on here, since they both have the bad downside of being attached to an incredibly vulnerable normal monster. And at number 8 we have Narrow Pass. This is a continuous trap card which can only be activated when both players have two or less monsters on their side of the field, where it then gains its effect where both players can only normal summon two additional monsters to their side of the field, and then they can't normal summon monsters at all as long as this card is face up. So on service level, this seems like a pretty decent floodgate. Your opponent only gets normal summon two more times total, before being completely locked out of normal summons and they have to destroy this card in order to do more. However, it only locks out normal summons, not normal sets, flip summons, or the ever important special summon. Sure, losing your normal summon after two turns is tough, but you can only normal summon one time per turn anyway, so you can kind of ignore the card for two whole turns, before you would begrudgingly have to find a way to destroy it. Usually, good floodgates can't be ignored for two full turns, but I guess cases can be made against decks that normal summon more than once, like Yosenju's. In which case, yeah, I guess it would be a pretty decent, incredibly specific counter to those kinds of decks. And hey, if your opponent's not able to get rid of the card after two turns, then it is a legitimate floodgate, which is why it's only at number 8 and not towards the higher spots on this list. And at number 7, we have Cuban. This is a level 4 thunder monster with only 600 attack that has the effect where once per turn you can roll a 6-sided die. And then based on the result, it gains a continuous effect where neither player can normal or special summon monsters with the same level as that dice result. So if you're lucky and get level 4 on the dice roll, you could potentially lock your opponent out of summoning a very important level of monster. However, you can't control which level of monster you're locking out, which is the main drawback of this card and why it makes this list. Technically, if you're lucky, you could hit the perfect level that stops whatever deck your opponent's playing. However, chances are that's not going to happen, 
and instead you have a very vulnerable monster with only 600 attack. If you have normal summon and face up attack position, that's really easy to beat over in order to get rid of this floodgate. Although if you're able to get this card into defense position, 1900 isn't half bad, but still not hard to beat over either. And at number 6 we have Insect Barrier. While this card is face up on the field, your opponent's insect type monsters just cannot declare an attack at all. So it's a full on stop on attacks for your opponent's insect type monsters. However, this falls under anti-support as it only works against one type of monster, and insects are not an incredibly popular type of monster in the metagame. If you know your opponent's playing a full insect deck, like Insectors, chances are it's still not going to be super useful because only stopping attacks isn't that big of a deal. Especially when Insectors, like used in my example, can destroy this card very easily with Insector Hornet. There's also the option to just use DNA Surgery to change all monsters to insect type, but that's kind of a waste on how to best use DNA Surgery. Although, putting aside the fact that it's not a very good Floodgate, it does indefinitely stall your opponent from attacking. So, if you're able to stall your opponent with a whole bunch of other Floodgates, and you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, you could combo it with the Parasite Parasite skill in order to stop your opponent from attacking completely, as Parasite Parasite treats all monsters on your opponent's side of the field as insect type monsters when it brings itself out. This is probably the only useful scenario I can think of using this card in, because it's definitely not useful in the TCG. However, Insect Barrier is not available in Duel Links, so I'm not really sure why I even mentioned this. If they were to make it available to players in the future, then this could be a niche combo available to the mobile version of Yu-Gi-Oh! And at number 5 we have the Emperor's Holiday. This is a continuous trap card which simply has the effect that it negates the effects of all equipped card effects on the field. So it's a full lockdown on a whole type of card. However, equipped cards are definitely the worst type of card in the game. Sure, there are incredibly niche scenarios where this could come in handy, like Dark Warrior combos definitely love to use equipped cards, like DDR Different Dimension Reincarnation and a Living Fossil, or even Infernoble Knights. They use a plethora of equip spell cards. But you're better off just using anything else really, even against decks where it could specifically be somewhat useful. Because for the most part, Noble Knight decks don't really care if their equip spell cards are negated, because they care more about the action of actually equipping those spells to gain their monster effects than the effects of the equip spells themselves. Sure, they definitely want the equip spell effects, but it's not a big deal if their effects are negated either. If you're facing a Dark Warrior deck and you're turning off their two useful equip spells, that's not really going to stop their combos very much, as mid-combo they can just destroy Emperor's Holiday with something like a Nightmare Phoenix. So basically, it only negates the effects of cards that no one really uses. And since it only negates the effects of cards no one really uses, it's too easy to actually destroy this card with anything else in order to make them live again. Generally, incredibly specific floodgates are too vulnerable to see competitive play, unless they stop something incredibly common, like non-fusion area, which prevents players from fusion summoning. If you activate non-fusion area against a deck that only uses fusion monsters, which there are a lot of, then they're actually in trouble. Although non-fusion area isn't that great of a card either, it's just an example of an incredibly specific floodgate that has seen competitive play in the past. And at number 4 we have Spatial Collapse. This is a trap card which can only be activated if both players control 5 or less cards in the field, where it gives a restriction where both players can only have 5 cards total on their side of the field, instead of the usual 10 or 12 if you count the two extra deck zones. Now this seems like a good way to stop your opponent's plays in their track if they have an incredibly limited amount of space to work with, but unless you activate Spatial Collapse as soon as they have exactly 5 cards and can't decrease the number, like maybe a whole bunch of cards in the back row due to pendulum scales, then it's all too easy to just use two of those monsters to go into a Nightmare Phoenix to get rid of the card. And most decks wouldn't really care to destroy it immediately either, because they can easily play with only having 5 monster card zones to work with and most players will wait to set cards until their main phase 2 anyway. Although against Pendulum decks, where they really have to set their scales early, which adds to cards on their sides of the field, and their whole gimmick is summoning a whole bunch of cards from their hand, then you could have a case that it may slow them down a little bit. However, even then it's kind of too easy to play around, to be useful without a whole bunch of help and support, as even giving your opponent 3 Ojama Trio tokens isn't the be-all end-all with Spatial Collapse anymore because you can just use those tokens for Link Summons now. And at number 3 we have Discord. This is a continuous trap card which has the effect where neither player can Synchro Summon, and then because it has this incredibly powerful effect, it has a clause where you send this card to the graveyard during the third end phase after activation. So it's kind of like Non-Fusion Area, a card I talked about earlier which did see competitive play. 
Both of these cards essentially lock both players out of summoning a specific extra deck monster. And during the Synchro era when Discord was released, pretty much everyone was using Synchro monsters. And there were definitely Synchro monster focused decks. So why did Discord not see any competitive play while non-fusion area did? Well, for a couple of reasons. For one, if you're going to be playing an anti-extra deck card like non-fusion area, it's really easy to not have any fusion monsters in your extra deck to have to worry about. Most decks that are going to use fusion monsters have to build their deck around going into fusion monsters, because they're not as easy to go into as other extra deck types. So locking your opponent up going into fusion monsters is more detrimental than single monsters. As there's the other important thing to remember, in order to perform most fusion summons, you have to activate a spell card which has the effect to do that fusion summon, which you can then chain non-fusion area to, which will make that card lost, and kind of count it as a counter card in that scenario. But with synchro summons, you can use discord in response to them summoning a tuner monster, but it won't really have the same effect as completely stopping a fusion spell card. And so discord never really saw any competitive play, even though synchros have seen competitive play ever since they came out essentially. And at number two, we have goblin fan. This is one of the earliest floodgates, where it has the effect that any level 2 or lower monster which is flip summoned is destroyed, and it does not have its effect activated at that time. So if your opponent flip summons a man eater bug, then goblin fan will destroy the card immediately and not allow its effect to activate. However, if you attack into a man eater bug and it flips and activates the effect in the damage step, then that does not count as a flip summon. So goblin fan won't actually stop man eater bug from destroying your monster. So Goblin Fan only stops low-level monsters in one of the slowest ways you can summon a monster, through an actual flip summon. During the same era that Goblin Fan came out, i.e. early Yu-Gi-Oh, they also had Infinite Dismissal, which would destroy all level 3 or lower monsters that were normal or flip summon during the turn, during the end phase. Which was infinitely more useful and versatile, and also hardly saw play. But I guess it wouldn't stop flip effects immediately if your opponent was flip summoning a man eater bug. And at number 1, we have Enervating Mist. This is a floodgate so bad that I'm not 100% sure it counts as a floodgate. Because what it does is, while it's phased upon the field, your opponent's hand size limit becomes 5. The standard hand size limit is 6. The hand size limit doesn't come into play until the end of your turn, which determines the amount of cards you're allowed to keep in your hand before your opponent's turn starts. And if you have more cards in your hand than the size limit, you have to send cards in your hand to the graveyard in order to go down to the hand size limit. So essentially, Enervating Miss stops your opponent from having one more card in their hand during their end phase, which I guess technically restricts your opponent in some way. But it's in such a minor way that it's negligible. And it's so minor that it's kind of hard to determine if it counts as a floodgate. But I think it does, because it technically restricts your opponent. If your opponent really wants six cards in their hand at the end of their turn, then they cannot, which means they were floodgated. They did release a power cup version of this card called Finite Cards. Which, while it's on the field, the hand size limit of both players becomes 3. So it cuts the hand size limit in half instead of just reducing it by 1. And Finite Cards has never seen competitive play either. And if the Power Crep version hasn't seen play, you can probably guess the competitive history of Enervated Miss. So it's kind of hard to find other floodgates that are worse than this card, without them not actually being floodgates. I think even Respect Play which doesn't count as a floodgate, is technically a more useful floodgate than Enervating Miss, because it actually stops danger monsters from activating their effects. Alright, and that's the list. If you like the Worst of videos, make sure you watch the playlist with all the others. Also, if you have ideas for other Worst of video topics, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as some examples of cards that should be on that list. The more examples of cards attached to an idea, the better.